Hey team, welcome to another Building Better Baseball timeout. And in today's timeout, we're going over pitching rules. We're going to go over all of the rules that pitchers need to follow in every single league. So let's get right into it. Remember, I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you the rules of baseball, and I teach you how to play the game. So let's get right into pitching rules. So what we're going to cover in this timeout is rules for pregame. So we're going to go over the pregame rules. We're going to go over clothing and colors. So basically the clothing that pitchers are allowed to wear and not allowed to wear. We're going to go over the pitch count and the inning restrictions for different leagues. We're going to go over the game warm-ups, basically in-game warm-ups. We're going to go over being on and off the rubber and what that means. We're going to go over how to come set and what that means and the rules for coming set. We're going to go over box. We're going to go over wind up rules. And we're going to go over pickoffs. For ages who are old enough to pick off, we're going to go over some rules for the pickoffs. So the first one rules for pregame. The rules for pregame warm ups is specific to each player and each team. So basically, the game of baseball itself doesn't have any rules for pregame warmups. All of the rules for pregame warmups and what players and teams want to do is all decided by that team. There is usually a bullpen area for pitchers and catchers to warm up. So there's usually a bullpen area for pitchers and catchers to warm up, and the bullpen is just going to be outside of the field of play. And in this field is right here with this mound of dirt. This is where every pitcher is going to warm up before they go into the game. So the starting pitcher before the game and during the game, any relief pitchers that are going to come in, this is where they're going to warm up. And there are some fields that don't have a warm-up area like a bullpen for pitchers to warm up. So in those cases, the pitchers and catchers are just going to have to find their own flat ground. Usually in the outfield or the warning track is a good place for pitchers to warm up. But if the field you're at doesn't have a warm-up area, you're just going to have to find your own. So moving on to rules for clothing and colors. Pitchers are not allowed to wear the color white besides their uniform. And this is because the color white is the same color as the ball. And if they're wearing the color white and that's the same color as the ball, that's very distracting for the hitters. And this rule for not wearing white is basically for the hitters so they can pick up the baseball a lot easier. So as you can see in this picture on the right, this player is wearing white sleeves. That would not be allowed. So the umpire would tell him to either take it off or roll up the sleeves before he steps on the mound to pitch. And the uniform equals your hat, your jersey, your pants, socks, and cleats. So in this picture right here, this player is wearing a white hat, and that is part of the uniform. So this is allowed when you are pitching. You're allowed to have a white hat. You're allowed to have a white jersey, pants, socks, and cleats. So the difference is these sleeves right here, that is not part of your uniform. But this hat would be a part of your uniform, so that would be allowed. Also, pitchers cannot wear any jewelry, earrings, necklaces, watches, rings, or bracelets. And this goes for any league below college. In college, you're allowed to wear jewelry, and in major leagues, you're allowed to wear jewelry. That's why you see some major league players with a huge necklace, right? But anything below college, as in high school, youth baseball, anything like that, you are not allowed to wear any bracelets, any rings, any necklaces, anything like that. So rules for restrictions. Restrictions are put in place in every league to protect pitchers' arms, specifically the shoulder and the elbow. So as you can see in this picture right here, this pitcher's shoulder is really coming back right there. And in this picture right here, this elbow seems to be in a really crazy position, right? That's what happens when you pitch. Pitching creates the most strain on a player's arm, and it can do the most harm if it's not looked after. The two huge restrictions put in place are usually... Limited pitch count, so each pitcher is not allowed to throw more than a certain number of pitches in a game. Or limited innings, so there are some leagues that do limited innings and not pitch count, where it doesn't matter how many pitches are thrown, the player is only allowed to throw two innings or three innings. So there's limited pitch count and limited innings. And each league is different. Every league has their own specific rules that they want to do for pitchers, but the universal rule for every baseball league is there is some type of restrictions for pitchers in terms of pitch count or innings. The next one, game warm-ups. So the general rule for warm-up pitches in the first inning is usually eight pitches. Now each league is different, like we just said, but most leagues do eight pitches for any pitcher. Now that's the starting pitcher going out in the first inning before the game starts, 
and any relief pitcher that comes in the first time they're pitching in the game, they will get eight pitches for warm-ups in between innings or when they come on the mound to start. Every inning after that is usually four or five pitches, depending on the league. Like I said, every league is different. But after the first inning, after they've pitched one inning, they usually only get four or five pitches, depending on the league and depending on the umpire. Every league and umpire is different, but pitchers always get warm-up pitches every inning. You have to warm up before the inning, so you always get warm-up pitches. It just depends on the umpire and the league on how many you get. So the rules for being on and off the rubber. In order to pitch the ball, the pitcher must be in contact with the rubber. So as you can see this pitcher right here, his foot is in contact with the rubber right here. So this is exactly what you want as a pitcher. Your foot has to be in contact somehow with the rubber. As you can see this pitcher over here, he is starting his motion, but if you look down here, his foot is not in contact with the rubber. So in this case, this would be an illegal pitch because he is not in contact with the rubber. Every pitcher, in order to throw the ball, has to be in contact with the rubber. The rubber is 24 inches long. Any part of the pitcher's foot can be in any spot on the rubber to pitch. So you have free reign, no matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, you have free reign of the pitching rubber, all 24 inches of it. And you could be all the way on this side, and your little speck of your toe could be touching the rubber. And as long as your foot is touching the rubber in some fashion, that is okay. So you can be anywhere on the rubber at any time. And also, you don't need to pitch from the same spot. Even though most pitchers do, you are able, if you want to throw one pitch from this side, and then the other pitch from this side, and then the third pitch from the middle, you can do that. You can move around in game and in between at bats anywhere you want on the rubber. You don't have to throw from the same spot every time. The pitcher can step off at any time except when in the pitching motion. At any point in your whole process, you're allowed to step off the rubber, which is basically just stepping back behind the rubber. So basically you're taking your foot and you're stepping on the back, just like this, stepping on the back. That is stepping off the rubber. Rules for coming set. Before a pitcher comes set, they can move any part of their body besides the foot that's on the rubber. So you see this first picture right here. He has not come set. He can move his whole entire body except his feet. His feet have to stay set. The one that's on the rubber and the one that's in front. His feet have to stay set except when he comes up to set, he can move his foot. But when he is not set and he's on the rubber, engaged with the rubber, you can move any part of your body in any way that you want. This is when they get their sign and they check their base runners. So a little example for you. So when you're engaged with the rubber and you haven't come set, that's when you see pitchers like this, they're getting their sign, and they can move like this. They're checking their base runners. They're checking all around. They can move their entire body, anything that they want to do. The only thing that they cannot move is the foot that's engaged with the rubber. They cannot move that. When a pitcher comes set, they can only move their head before starting their motion. Any other movement is a balk. So what does that mean? Once you come set, you can only move your head. If you move your shoulders, that's a balk. Move your arm, that's a balk, right? Move your leg, that's a balk. Move your body, that's a balk. When you come set, you can only move your head. The rules for balks. A balk is basically a foul or a violation that a pitcher commits. Box exists so pitchers cannot deceive the runners on base. So basically, you're not allowed to come here and you're not allowed to start your entire pitching motion and then completely stop and then throw out the runner. Because what if they're stealing, right? So you can see this picture right here. They're taking this lead and then all of a sudden they run and they steal. If there was no box and box weren't part of the game, the pitcher would be able to stop their pitching motion and just turn and throw them out. That's why box exists so the pitchers cannot deceive the base runners. If a pitcher balks with no one on base, then there's no penalty. Nothing happens. The umpire will call it. The umpire will call it and stop the pitch, but there's no penalties. If a pitcher balks with a runner or runners on base, each runner advances to the next base. So any runners that are on, if the pitcher balks, they automatically advance to the next base. So if you have bases loaded or even a runner on third and you balk, that scores the run because the runner on third gets to advance home. The most common types of balks. The most common type of balk is when a pitcher moves after they come set without stepping off. 
The next type is the pitcher stops their motion after committing to go home. The third one is when a pitcher drops the ball when engaged with the rubber. So this is a balk. If you are engaged with the rubber at any point, it doesn't matter if you're not set or you're set, if you drop the ball, then that is a balk. Another one is the pitcher brings his hand to his mouth or licks his fingers while engaged with the rubber. So you are not allowed to bring your hand to your mouth or lick your fingers when you're engaged with the rubber. That has to happen when you're not engaged with the rubber. So if you're a pitcher who likes to lick their hands, Max Scherzer, if you've ever seen Max Scherzer pitch, he loves to lick his hand, right? He always does it though when he's not on the rubber. If you are engaged with the rubber, you are not allowed to bring your hand to your mouth or lick your hand or lick your fingers in any way. Otherwise, that's a balk. The rules for the windup. The windup is when the pitcher starts facing the batter instead of sideways, which is the stretch. So the windup, this is how you would start in the windup. You basically start like this, facing the batter rather than facing sideways. The windup is used when no one is on base, and there's a good reason for it because. Once a pitcher starts the wind-up motion, they must go home. So if you've never seen the wind-up motion, it looks like this. You're starting like this. You usually step to the side. And that, when you step to the side, that is starting your motion. You have to go home no matter what. So you're here. You start your motion, step to the side. That's when you come here and here. And then you come up. And then you come forward and throw. As soon as you start your motion, you have to go home. So that is why the windup is usually only used with no one on base. Because if there's a runner on first and you're going from the windup, as soon as you take that first step to start your motion, that runner can steal because you have to go home. You can't pick off anymore. That's what the stretch is used for, is used for runners on base so you're able to throw to bases and try to pick people off. And the last one is if they stop, it's a balk, as we just talked about, right? The rules for pickoffs. Pitchers must move their front foot first to start the pickoff. So in this situation, this pitcher right here, he would have to start the pickoff with his left foot. He cannot use his right foot. You have to start the pickoff with your front foot. If you don't, that's a balk. Pitchers can only pick off to an occupied base. If they throw to an empty base, it's a balk. So if there's a runner on first and you try and pick off to first and that runner steals, you are not allowed to throw it to second base ahead of the runner. That would be a balk. You have to throw to the occupied base. So in that case, you would have to throw to first base, and then first base would have to throw to second base to try to get the runner out. Now, this rule applies only if you don't step off. If you step off the rubber, you're just like another player. You can do whatever you want. You can fake. You can not throw it. You can do whatever you want. But if you're engaged with the rubber and you do a pickoff, you have to throw to an occupied base. If a pitcher doesn't step off the rubber, they must throw the ball to the base. So if they step off, they can fake the throw and not throw it, and that's okay. If you don't step off the rubber and you don't throw the ball, that is a balk. Now here are two rules for lifting leg pickoffs to corner bases. So for instance, lefty pitchers picking off to first base and righty pitchers picking off to third base. The first one, your leg must not cross over your standing leg. So let me show you what that means. If you're here and I'm picking off in front of me and I lift my leg, I have to keep my leg straight here. My foot cannot cross over my standing leg just like this. If I cross it over like this and I try and pick off, that is a balk. I have to keep it straight like this and then I can either go home or I can pick off here but my foot cannot cross over my standing leg. I have to keep it straight. And the other one is your foot cannot go past a 45 degree angle. So when you pick off, you have a range of 45 degrees from the base to the 45 degree angle. If your foot goes past that 45 degree angle, that is a balk. And that's all up to the umpire's decision. And that basically prevents the pitcher from going like this and then going up and then going home, but then going like that and throwing to the base. You can't do that. That's deceiving the runner. Thanks for taking the time out today with Building Better Baseball. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I'm here every week with a brand new video to help you take your game to the next level. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something about pitching rules and I'll see you in the next time out.